No, they aren't. And that I think that's the biggest mistake they ever made. <laughs> because I, I, I love open source, and I love LibreOffice. I lo I, it's the preferred fork of open office, and it's made GoOffice unnecessary. But there are some higher things, and it's not that open couldn't do them. It's just for legal reasons they're not allowed to. And it gets to be issues with enterprise workflow with things like spreadsheets and other things. It, 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 it's, it's like a list of 20 things. That's like, if you're not doing these 20 things, LibreOffice is everything you need, or open if you must support Oracle. Well, there were some functionalities of micro, Microsoft uh, Office that was forced to be open because the U.S. government forced them into it. Uh, yes, but, the, uh, well, and, and uh, some of it was patent violations also, like the uh, XML stuff. Well, no, that came later, but... Yeah, no, but I, I know what you're talking but about. Gonna, but there's still a few things that it just... But, it was but, the, but, but, but like I said, they're like less than 20 things, and it's if you're not doing one of these very, very, very specific things, you don't actually need work. well into other things. What are you talking about? Google Docs? Yeah, we were just going over various office systems. Yeah, you know, I agree with this. I just, uh, if, I, if your argument was that, you know, cloud office stuff is not there yet, you know. It's not there yet, but it's... it's I, I don't even think companies would want to do it. You know, like, I, I, like, unless there's some... If it's trivial information they're writing, maybe. But I, I can't tell you how many companies... I do, do you know, ASP, Application Service Providers, was a big deal back in my day, which is now what people would call iCloud and all this other shit. That's exactly what iCloud is yeah. doing, is provide application service providers. And that died rapidly because property became an issue. Well, no, no, here's the real issue that's going to come up with all of these cloud solutions. It's okay for personal people, and it's okay for small businesses that don't care about shit, but larger companies or people working on a government contract or anything that's regulated, chain of custody and meeting the frickin' audit yes. requirements. Oh, my God! <laughs> well, it's... It, look, we're in a new social era type thing. I don't know how long this will last, but everything's Facebook and what is this? Bolt, that front board thing and Twitter and all this other crap. So, well, it's consumptive. It's it's like trivial information, but also at the same time, the naivety of, of, of consumers that don't have that corporate mentality, the covet mentality of the IT that has been fighting for security and keeping their own protective bubbles, they don't. They just freely say, and it's maybe a narcissistic thing or whatever. Um, but no, it's not a narcissistic it? thing, but it's ignorance. The reality no, is you... Are you, you telling me there's not YouTubers out there that are not narcissistic and wanting to freely just give out information and look at me, look how special I am and all this other crap? There are people like that, but here's the thing. There's 90% of the time, it's ignorance. Uh, the reality is the most effective demonstration you can give people today is basically, uh, and I, I still stand by this security example that people give all the time, of you walk in and, you know, just scanning. And you're like, okay, here's the following things I think you should change. And, like, things like they have their open Wi-Fi and their son and other stuff, or they have, like, their Wi-Fi partially encrypted, but it's broadcasting 100 feet out into the parking lot and yada, 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 yada. And you point out, okay, here I am sitting in a parking lot across the street, and I'm cracking into your network. Here I say, uh, they're like, okay, never mind. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's like, well, I think these things are successful, but I'm, my main theme is that I think 
these cloud things are very successful because the, the, the social underpinning that is Facebook, Twitter, and everything else has, ma has made it a very popular thing. And so sharing and making your presence and doing everything in the cloud is the thing to do. But I, I think that they'll run into the, into the same wall that ASPs did back in the day when companies have been there and done that. Um, and, 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 uh, customers do. Uh, I, 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 okay, what is this about Lotus Symphony? Um, oh yeah, that's an office suite for Linux Max. Yeah, Dartboard actually uses it. It's like registerware. It's like the uh, you know the Express Edition of like you know you just register it and you get it for free. It's like the right? Express Edition of uh, Visual C++ and whatever. Uh, okay, back to the topic at hand before we spend another hour on I mean, that. The topic at hand, but we're talking about the Keymaster. Hello. That's a different look for you, isn't it? Are you the key master? Not that I know of. Uh, uh, well, okay. There, there. You know, there's actually some Apple news this week, uh, and we can cover this one of two ways. We can either uh, continue this in tech babble, or we can sit down and do a four-way uh, cranky geeks. Or um, what do y'all want to do? I don't care. Oh, because are you saying we're not going to do Thursday? Is what you're getting at? Oh, well, we can. Uh, uh, we'll see what other Apple news we have for Thursday. I don't know how we, much we, more. Hey, I, you know me. I can do rants. Uh, uh, okay, we'll keep the, uh, then, then we will keep this. We will keep the babble going. <laughs> um, I want to I want to hear this. Now, this is a thing, and he was talking about like I guess because I, I liked it. I came on late to what he was saying, but I like what he had to say about like the office weeks and, and not wiping the well, cloud. Well, for me, Google Docs is nothing more than a web page. That, that really is what it is, yeah. It, it, absolutely right. And see, the thing that I have with that, and you, and, and, and no, I say YouTube is definitely more on the web page, though. Wait, wait, wait. You know, this, I guess, actually has a very good point because that's a very weighted statement. I've watched a lot of this, I just videos, and you have this, I just has <laughs> lots of definitions lined up to this, to the backing of the statements. And, and weighted is that what I would like to add. It's just being a web page has a, a massive amount of logistics to go behind that and saying, well, am I going to get the richness of, of, of having something that would be local and a client encoded for me? And, and do, do I have to play de facto to an HTML5 standard that won't give me all the benefits of something local? If, if it's, and it's just a web page that it has a back button, a refresh, I don't have all these other indicating things that can work natively with my operating system. And no local storage by default. Yeah, uh, honestly, that was an issue I was having writing the templates for uh, the stuff. I, I I wrote this great I wrote this UI and I'm so I thought I'm like wait a minute. Uh, I, I I set out and I used it. I'm like it looks pretty. We have a problem here. I've just jQueried in a an element and when I hit the back button, I'm leaving the page rather than going back to the hiding the jQuery. And after spending Three hours googling around for jQuery hide that would let me actually still stay on the page when I was triggering a window ending event. I gave up and wrote around it because of, and the reality is, and this is more a limitation of the way in which web stuff interacts with the browser, but you can't seamlessly integrate like you would with a native application at this point. It just, it's... You're integrating with a browser, not the Yeah, but you, but here's the thing. No browser, uh, regard, especially in mobile, but it, the same thing in desktop, you don't have the sufficient hook-in to go in and selectively intercept the commands of, like, the back button, the forward button. No, let me intercept the right-click button. Let me intercept... This kid, let, let, I I let you do that. Um, I don't think Firefox lets you do that. Uh, Safari. And, and, and even in IE, it's it's limited in what you can do with it and how you look, can intercept it. I can tell you as a programmer that I used to envision the web as the future of applications until they started chipping away at all of, at all the power and expansion we used to have. 
Now, security came into play. Well, no, okay. see, that's the thing. How do you open I, that I up without having the mother that. of all security holes? Oh, my God. It was unbelievable the amount of access I had to a machine on the web page. Now, <laughs> I was a nice program about it and making real applications. I hated the whole electronic brochure mentality of, of the web, but... Back in the day, man, I used to But see, way. the same power you need to do that, you can use for some damn evil things. <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. right. And, and now we have a very limited scope. Now browsers are their own little sandbox mm -hmm. world for limited PDIs. And it's no longer fun anymore. It's just this, uh, it's a web page, as this I just said. You know, I, I, don't, I disagree with the people that want everything to go web because uh, having the least common, denom common denominator is not always the best thing to have. Well, uh, the worst of the uh, web browsers is uh, Google, uh, Google Chrome OS. The whole operating system is nothing but a browser. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's just bad. That's just not, yeah. The web to me should serve as a repository for transfer of information and information that makes sense that needs to be disseminated rapidly to many nodes. Well, and the only way I can think of to address that security standard is the same problem we have with the mobile right now, which would be every single website makes a plugin. And it's like, do you really want a plugin for every single website, for every single site? It's like, no! God, no! It's like... Talk about fragmentation, huh? Yeah, it's like, well, you install the plugin from this trusted source. Okay. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> say fragmentation, my hair stands on end. I can't stand this damn. It's such an apple lens argument that is not even funny. Speaking of fragmentation, I gotta eat fried my hard drive. <laughs> uh, 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 okay, what do we want to start with? Are you the key master? Yes. Um, okay. Uh, here's something that'll probably trigger a bit rant. I, we got two things that are trigger a, trigger a bit rant. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing Apple was doing today. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, one of them is not Apple, but it's the, it, it's, it's the uh, fluff user. It's, it's the last one. And the other one is the thing Commodore has been talking about all... He's been talking about all freaking night as we've been taping every single show. And we'll finally get to it just a sign. What do you think about this whole key master walled I'm garden? Gonna, I want to first hear... I, I'm going to be quiet because everybody knows my opinion. But I, I'd like to hear Commodore's and this idea. It's like, I'm talking about... Oh, it's 10.8 mountain lion system requirements and... and no, I'm talking about the, you know, the gatekeeper thing, you know, the you go into the UAC. You can go into both. C c start with whichever one you want, Kami. Okay, let's start with the gatekeeper or the key master, whatever we we'll call it. And I've got to find, I have got to find the cutscene. <laughs> I've got to find the cutscene. No, you're going to put in Ghostbusters. If I can find it. You're opening the door. <laughs> yeah, if I can find it. But anyway, uh, we have this gatekeeper, which is the um, basically a UAC type of thing where you keep, where by default you can't install unsigned apps. Now they say any developer can sign apps. Now, um, as an Apple developer, um, can you sign um, apps with uh, without BRM wrapped around them? Yes, you still can. Okay, but sweet. not for okay. iOS. iOS, you have to get your signature. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying. Uh, all right, but for so, now, we're sticking to OS X. Yeah, you still can be able to do it. I mean, you don't have to go through the regimented... So what I'm get worried about is that the, the gatekeeper, you can't install from a third-party source um, if, uh, if you know, like they don't wrap around your arm. Yeah, the third-party source right. doesn't matter. I mean, what do you mean by third-party source? I mean, if your package is signed and it's downloaded from some third-party, I mean, the signature is a signature, You've already your software's already a package at that point. Right. Here's the thing, honestly, what I equate this to, why I get where Kami's going with it, and I, with it being Apple, I'm a little more concerned, but it reminds me of the crap that Windows started doing back in uh, Service Pack 
three of XP. This is not a Windows Genuine Verified. Do you do want to... Imagine if the default behavior on Windows was anything that wasn't Genuine Verified. Until you go in and change the default settings, you can't install it. It's not that you can't install it. It's just the default is it won't let you. Yeah, our, the, the desktop is going to become very muted as we move forward. And, and, and you can still install unsigned, quote-unquote, software on Windows. Um, but you got to jump through some hoops to do it. Uh, the, the thing of it is, is that it's not... It, this is not as protective as people may think it to be. The original intent is, is for... Te like, Windows' main problem was driver control. Right, and, you know, and, and and that's a that's a valid argument as far as logistical, you did it type thing, and oh, here's a stamp. It's kind of like it's kind of like just putting a stamp on something for the sake of it as a formality is is quite another. And where it leads in terms of policies, which become very superfluous and and make us move backwards in deployment of software, is another problem. Um, I don't think the Mac has a problem with drivers as Windows. So this whole gatekeeper thing that I think that, that what they're after right now is because OS X is maneuvering itself to be more open. Um, and I don't mean open source. I mean open to hold because it's participating now on mobile. It's good. It's allowing. It's allowing the behavior of mobile uh, operating uh, systems. Uh, like the other it's thing have is a lot oh, of breaches. It's it it has also breaches. reached the market share point where OS X is beginning to be targeted. <laughs> you and I will disagree all day long. Market share is not the reason for malware. But I point in fact, Linux, Linux, Apache, I, uh, their their whole Apache uh, platform and, and publishing websites and all of the back end from there on. Yeah. Is, it, yes, it is the dominant software in its market. And, and if it, you're doing web exploits, you are the, Apache is the primary targeted thing. Now, its inherent security it, makes it more difficult. Yeah, it's much more, but it is it is it is much more effective at defending itself versus IIS. Take the RCP protocol and all that other bullshit that that Windows failed at, where every other damn service critic was connected to their main pipe with remote procedure calls, right? Mm -hmm. And and I said RCP, I meant RPC. Yeah, I know what you meant, though. And, and, and um, it exploited the entire system. It is a system design. I don't care. Now, I'm not, not, about, yeah, I'm not talking about phishing, like an email that deceives the user. A user can be broken on any system, no matter how secure. But if we're talking, <laughs> if we're talking about system breaches, oh, hell no. Windows made lots of mistakes on system breaches. And oh, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and market share didn't matter anything for that. Now, Gatekeeper, OS X is now the, it, entering a realm where more potential programming system breaches could be exploited that are unforeseen. Because the, it, OS X is now kind of in a, in a realm, do we remember where Windows started playing with ActiveX? Yes. In terms of, uh, wait, wait, ActiveX in the email and the active desktop. And then allowing all of these social platforms to integrate and be, and, and be part of their operating system, and how much hell of a security it was to try to deal with. Apple's trying to. No, when out. Apple started toting integrating Twitter and stuff like that onto iOS, I'm like, oh, here we go. Here, yeah. we, here so, we go. Like, <laughs> this is how they keep it before. But you have to have that. I don't care how it is. You have to, now the UAC. Everybody was annoyed. I'm actually used to it at this point with Windows Seven. I'm very happy with Windows Seven. Um, I think it makes sense. Do you, let me tell you this true story. My parents, when I got them to finally get um, a Mac, this was some years ago. They were so pissed off at having to put their password in for everything they installed. Why can't it be like Windows? I just wanted to go in there. I know. I was like, oh, really? So that's why you always called me over here to fix your damn viruses and shit, because you didn't want anything to happen. You just wanted on there and not. Well, you know, and and, and, e like, and uh, even yeah. with the yeah, so, even with the oh dear, even with the vast improvements that have happened in security with Vista and Seven, I cannot count how many times oh my kid went to some website 
you know, come up and the thing's infected, you know, it's uh, 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 because the simple fact is, code comes on the windows and it just does stuff with it. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you wish you need to set up an administrative account and call it root. <laughs> you know, and I hope most, most Mac users don't use an administrative privilege uh, user as their main user. Uh, they shouldn't, and, and that's one of the advantages of, of Unix and Linux systems in that you can still do your day-to-day -day computing without like, needing actually, to be. Like you you cannot computer. use Windows without being an administrator. You just can't get anything done. You don't have sufficient permissions. Well, not necessarily. You can use administrator, but, but, but use, Windows does have shells. The problem that they have, though, is they've laid these user shells on top of legacy code, like RPC in what was that recent one? Was it what was that recent worm that everybody was worried about? Um, was it orange? Orange clicker. Yes, and that, because it was tied to a very ancient protocol, uh, now working in Windows that they had layered user shells on that actually transcended all user shells. The problem is that Windows has user shells, but it's not truly really all sandboxed yet. Now, yeah. I don't know if that's true with Windows 8, and I think they, they're trying to do that with all the Windows there, Here's the thing. Microsoft cannot do that in one version of Windows without breaking a lot of shit. They have to do that in stages. They just have to. That's <laughs> just... A, there is no way around that. Can they do that in service packs or what? They could. Absolutely. They can do stuff like that with service packs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's definitely like you have different versions, like just have a little different service package. No, 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 no. See, the Vista actually drew the line in the sand between kernel space and user space. That was the essential, the major difference. That's the administrative accounts because, yeah, yes. Windows XP, if you weren't running Pro, you weren't running the good version. Right, and not only that, most programs actually expected a single user protocol to the kernel with all permissions. Exactly, right. they expect to be just like DOS, even though it's NT. Right. DOS actually became favorable over everything because why it was literally split because there was nothing in between the applications and executing it essentially, you know. So um, yeah, it was the, when you add those layers and, and things like that, they can definitely do it in a service patch without causing major chaos. The problem that, that arises is when you have drivers and, spe and specific protocols and software that may be you know considered legacy that expect requests to happen under the older model that can shut down by security uh, barriers in place. Right. Like that. Well, and that was the real problem, honestly, at the end of the day with Vista. Huh? What was that? You know, it was just... They, they, um, they didn't get the balance quite right, and as a result, it, 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 the system was... Panic! Panic! Yep. There's a... There's a... There, there's a light! Run for the hills! <laughs> that was the biggest problem with this that I think was the OEMs, they sold, they sold on crap hardware, and B, there was no drivers. That, not so much, yeah, well, yeah, that's the problem. No, it's not so much of the drivers. The driver software in place that you, you installed over XP was totally expected, permit, they totally expected permissions to run through all the older driver models. And Windows Vista even started the, the WDM and all that other crap. And that was a completely different driver model. If you didn't write for it, the legacy... The legacy uh, what would be the correct word? Microsoft did not capitulate essentially to that and it forced software developers to go to their standard and that caused all the breaks. And think of it, you've got a, a program that's expecting uh, an answer or, or, or access to it and, and, and basically causes a memory fault of some sort uh, that it, 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 it can't get a response and so it ends up into an idle wait or I mean, all kinds of freezes can occur. It's just a massive clusterfuck when you get when you get into into things that expect an older model, and then there's something in its way that it can't get done, and then you're your whole. And then Windows sucks at sandboxing, even at Vista, so it couldn't control. Well, and you know what's so funny about that? There was a great third-party application which added really good sandboxing to Windows, but because of what Microsoft did with the anti-rootkit stuff, they locked it out. Well, Windows 7, I think, has a, a good amount of sandboxing, but when Vista started out, it would, it would just be an absolute mess. Yeah, I know. Does it have a lot of good sandboxing? Um, Windows 7 is actually very improved. It, 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 if we could take all the legacy out of Microsoft and all those older programs, it would actually be a lot better to most people. But the problem is, is that Windows is a very much a business 
uh, operating system. It's not an Android. Not Android. for much longer. Yeah, I see a lot of consumer stuff, especially Windows 7. You know? I see fluff in Microsoft yeah. land. Yeah. Yeah. How, many, how many times have you spoken to users and said, oh, I'm just going to format and install Windows 7? You went on Macs. Oh, I'm getting Lion. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to format and, and put in Lion. I'm like, holy Christ. I think this I this you actually had said one day because somebody was bitching at me. And this I just came to my defense and goes, you know, shut up. Mr. Bit has all this professional crap on, on, on his Mac Pro. It's impossible for him to be able to just, like, format it. Yeah. You know, yes, I work on it. You do work on it. Work on it. I do stuff. I produce, you know. Like, You're a dying breed, bit. <laughs> it's like, these people that are just on Twitter, it's like, yeah, I'm formatted. It's like, oh, I, it's like, God, you must not have much to lose. I'm here to be able to format. It's insane. <laughs> and businesses don't like to do that. They have a lot to lose. Oh, yeah. Do, do, do you know how many of my... Uh, uh, business clients that you know they'll just even people who are mad at me and we're in disputes over pay shit if one of their computers locks up and they can't get it something like i have cash come run <laughs> <laughs> it, it is it is funny I, I can't tell you how many more people do i actually still know doctors running windows ninety eight. i don't know how many people are running windows 98 i do i do i do there's a old uh, billing um medical program called Medisoft and it has an old DOS version. And these doctors are happy with it. You know why? Because nobody targets when there's not eight anymore. So <laughs> they can run virus free. But one of them run Windows too. <laughs> I mean, so they still have this like this Windows 98 running DOS version of Medisoft on there. And it's funny because I, I will tell you though, Windows NT4, uh, the server uh, that I that I've done like just for private practices of doctors back when back in the days when I did all that networking stuff are still running NT4 today that is supporting Windows 98 workstations using DOS mini soft. It's insane. Nice. We're well, talking about longevity. You know. Yeah, I, I, I can't help but notice we spent the whole Microsoft show talking about Apple, and now we're spending the whole Apple show talking about Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> takes me fucking back. Windows 3.1.2. <laughs> <laughs> I got 32 in Peachtree networking. Yeah, I remember when Novell was king. I was a certified network administrator. And, 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 and then I later became a certified network engineer. And then Windows decided to make their whole, you know, the whole new network protocols. And that that pissed and a lot of people off when they did that. I don't know. I was happy. I hated uh, I, the whole new bus system. And for, I mean, you could do it. I mean, under 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 the Bell's operating system, their network operating system, yeah, you could do the whole client server stuff, but so many systems with this, this stupid bus system that when one bayonet the coaxial failed, God almighty, was a goddamn headache to trace that shit. And, and Windows made it easier rather than running the network operating system of Novell that within their own protocol tools to the networking, it was a lot easier to diagnose um, that thing. Gosh, so, you know, I've progressed from hardware to networking to programming, so that's why I'm all over the place on, on my experiences. But. Uh, okay, this, did you have anything to say on the uh, Vince Corthos? What? <laughs> <laughs> you mean the whole locking down? <laughs> I'm yeah. not really a big fan of, lock, uh, of operating systems locking themselves down. Well, no, it, it, it goes to the stupid thing, you know, is it the job of the OS to protect us or is it our job to, you know, lock it down ourselves? Uh, and it, half the users want to be babied and the other half say, don't make any fucking choices for me. Yeah, yeah I, don't want, I don't want a button, I want a whole bunch of knobs to play around with. You, you know what? I would love to see this if both Windows and OS 10 
would adopt an in because this is this is something you can get Linux BSD side. There are distros that go for very minimalistic. You know, it's like it's your job to do it yourself. We're not going to make any decisions for you. And then there are the ones that make all the decisions for you, and then you have to unmake the decisions. So I would roll your own version of OS X. Well, no, no. I I would love when you install OS X and Windows to have an option there going. I understand the security risks. But leave it open and let me do, you know, make my own decisions up. You know, allow for me to add my own. It's like, allow, uh, basically, I, I understand that this is great for the average user who's not going to do this, but give me the ability to, to make it more. <laughs> well, there's a whole lot of reasons why computers fail. And I know. Websites, depending on what websites they go to. Like well, let me give you an enterprise a situation. Enterprise would love everything to be a dump journal with very limited access and just to only oh yeah to very, to very precisely do only what the user needs and nothing. You know, that's why I use CrunchBang Linux. I'm very productive in it, I, even though it's on a crappy single core, 1.6 gigahertz with a half a gig of RAM. I do I do more coding than that than I've ever done in Windows 7. Well, no, no, but what Bit's talking about, and that's great for you if it's a single use of it, but what Bit's talking about, there are a lot of places that would like, you can only go to the five web pages we use. You can only open the three applications we use. Basically, it cannot do yeah, anything yeah, else. It's more of a dedicated device or something, you know, kind of like a word processor when you, if you get a little more done better on a word processor than you were done, you know, if then versus a, say if you had a Commodore 64, you would just play the games that's on it, you know? Well, no, it, it's really funny. I know the machines he's talking about. I've gone in places, I've consulted in places like this, and the moment I sit down in front of one of their computers, I can feel my cerebellum imploding. It's just like, please step away from the computer before I die. Please go back to an actual computer. Please, I beg of you. Well, uh, well I, I company where they had like a main hard drive somewhere uh, I mean the uh, operating system and all that somewhere and all the, the other uh, they were dumb terminals kinda... that went in over the network and it rebooted once a day and yeah I know what you're talking about <laughs> yeah basically all, all they were were just keyboards and mics yeah, yeah. a lot of schools do that actually and then that and then and then when we were doing internet repair, this well other this one guy had all these computers suddenly crashed all one by one, and it had a virus that was just spreading through all of his computers in his uh, little company. And what happened was just one guy there was well visit a porn site. You know what the hell? <laughs> uh. Well, what, here's what I'm getting at. Because you're asking, all right, what what should happen? I think that operating operating systems have to make uh, the true guts of an operating system is, is its engine. The UI can be changed. It's kind of like think of it as Linux, and that you can you can argue about UI implementations, but the engines must stay the same. And uh, I would like operating systems to do that. And in, in, in the effect, it makes sense that most users are not super geeks and they just want to do what they want to do simply. However, it doesn't require an iOS mentality to do that. In other words, limiting and shutting off everything else in the engine. Yeah. But but you can imp certainly implement things in the UI. And I, I remember so much of the days where there were so many Windows XP machines that had artificial limitations installed in mass by an ID department where they couldn't mm -hmm. access certain things with an XP. But why not just the UI? Okay, you make this UI implementations and keep the, the core engine there for all of its complexity because, let's be frank, that's what I was arguing in our last show. I, 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 I will tell you exactly why they don't do that. Because not everybody is an idiot. And uh, I actually almost got suspended from a middle school for this. Uh, me and a couple of other people, they had done that. They just removed the UI hook. And we're like, well, it's still here. So we went and made it do it anyways. And apparently apparently they wanted to charge us with, you know, like violating. The, they, wanted to, they wanted to turn us into little felons. <laughs> they, wanted, they were intent. Uh, if it had not been for about four teachers going, 
These are good fucking kids. Don't you dare fucking do that shit. <laughs> uh, we we, we would have been little felons. They would have thrown us. Yeah, but that kind of thing we're talking about is breaching the system goes on now without regard, regardless of UI implementation. I mean, anything can be exploited and we hear stories about things happening on university campus. My, my, my thing that I'm getting at is Windows, I hope, will allow a professional desktop to exist if we choose to select it, or you can run a Metro UI. Now, iOS and OS X have very different engines. Um, they have, you know, iOS is a sub, is a sub engine of, of uh, OS X, but if Windows maintains a full blown OS underpinning to all of its devices, then it can toggle UI implementations, whereas the Apple argument cannot. Yeah, I, I said that in the stupid uh, comments the other day. It's like the biggest problem with Windows 8 is that it's lacking the second UI. Really, that's what it needs. It needs the second pro UI, the the true desktop UI. Where it's like, go the fuck away, Metro. I'm doing I'm doing desktop mode right now. Go the fuck away. Because <laughs> because the argument from enterprise is going to say yes, we'd like to have a dumb like terminal, but we don't want to sacrifice functionality. Because you've decided to give us some subpar engine or an engine that is a subset of a major OS. We want the full blown OS, but we want limitation in the UI. Well, and, which and is, honestly, I, and that would be easy. made on a per system basis. You know? right. and, and if it comes to a consumer, yes, give it. I mean, I, I as a consumer, as a programmer, want to have the choice to say, okay, if I want to run the old Windows desktop, please let me. I'm pretty convinced that, when, that Microsoft will let that happen. Because just based on their history. I could be wrong, but I, based on upon what I've seen, even in the Vista, they've acquiesced quite a lot if there's enough people bitching about it. Even Apple acquiesces uh, when people bitch enough. I mean, if we didn't bitch as programmers, we'd still all be running applications through Safari on the iPhone. So, um, Well, you need uh, programmers, and if you take away the SDKs, mm -hmm. you can't, nobody's programming anymore. Then you could, I don't think they want anybody programming anymore. I think they want you to have like this ten thousand dollar OS that only Microsoft has access to to program. Uh, well, uh, dot .NET, I'm exploring it more. The whole Metro thing is just an extension of dot .NET, essentially, and, and you have different function protocols that you'll that you'll access that are Metro only. Well, still the I, I, Metro but, is also HTML five. Well, you, everything well, you have many builders right now that still publish. Uh, straight out HTML5, but Metro still you can you can program in in C sharp and AS, you know, the v, the whole VB side of it, and then publish out straight from there and use uh, Metro hooks if you wanted to. But I'm talking about uh, not from a programmer perspective, but as the end user perspective, that I want to be able to have my desktop. I Windows itself, I love the idea of Windows. I think that self-contained package. Um, f little function blocks, essentially, what they are, is is the way to go. Um, in many cases, I don't want to have to be controlled in a, in a very, very mobile friendly or touch friendly environment for that. Well, we, 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 we said that. We, we all, I, and here's the thing: I'm waiting for the industry to get just like HP got that they need to make a an all in one that you can actually scale and mess with the inside of with. I'm waiting for the industry to get. Uh, the UI needs to be adaptive, and the, it let the, the end user, the person who's using the machine at this particular moment in time, is the one most qualified to know which mode they happen to be in at this time. You know? <laughs> and they mess it up, they say, hey, I messed it up, I have to buy a new computer. I must buy a new one. Okay. Um, well, I mean, look, the, the operating systems take some... Uh, responsibility, and, and I don't, I, and that's why we have a UAC in Windows, and, and why we're going to get a keeper in OS X. There is some of that, and you can have security there, and, and you know what? You can have the switches to turn it off if you want. Um, but I will tell you, there, there, there is an argument to say, look, for the most, for most users, they don't know enough, and IT managers are going to say, I want my end users that are in that cubicle to just be able to do what they do, but do it very well without limitation. So I think there is that medium. The problem that I'm seeing is that is that software companies seem right now, and this is a transitional period, so it is still speculation until we hit, until we really get to the meat of it. But it seems like we, all of us are arguing in extremes. It's like either we get a mobile OS that's very limited, 
um, or desktop operating systems become that of mobile, and, and we're going to lose all this functionality. We don't know that quite yet. I can tell you in, <coughs> in Mountain Lion, all the underpinning complexity is still there. All of everything that I enjoy in OS 10 is still very much there. And, I, and we don't have Windows 8 yet. I'm very pissed at the Windows 8 developer copy that I have, but we're told that everything is different. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how... I, 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 I am holding off my final judgment of Windows 8 until I get my hands on an RC. I have... There's a lot of things I've seen that I'm like... And even that, I'll give Windows, I'll give Windows a chance to say, after all the bitching, that if they actually allow a parallel UI to... No, no but here's the thing. Uh, that That's at least going to be the first service pack, which will not happen overnight. That's... I know, uh, well, but... I'll, but I'm arguing a principle at this point, not the not the you know, the, the whole practical uh, deployment of it. In principle, if they do acquiesce to that, then we've won. That that's the only thing that matters. To me. 